someone by matching their DNA to the DNA left at a crime scene. But there's a new twist to the technology that's made for some surprising results. Recently, authorities have been entering DNA from crime scenes into huge data banks and then letting the computers sort them out. More and more, the computer is finding matches, what police call cold hits. And that means that a suspect who thought he was just being charged with one crime may now find himself being linked to others as well. Given the reliability of DNA, cops think the system is about as foolproof as you can get. Or is it? It's a question that's turning more and more inmates into jailhouse scientists, including the man you're about to meet. His name is Anthony Turner. Have a good one. Not long ago, Milwaukee police arrested Turner near the scene of a rape, and the DNA from the crime scene was run through the Wisconsin State Crime Lab's new data bank of unsolved cases. There were three cold hits that matched Turner, making him one of the first accused serial rapists in Wisconsin to be caught by a computer program. You're the man. I'm the man. Mm hmm well, What'd you think about that? You know, I mean, here I am sitting in the county jail on one charge, and now here's my lawyer coming to me saying that, you know, they linking me to this cold hit thing, that database thing, and I'm, I'm saying to myself, what the hell's going on here? Turner is now at Waupun, one of Wisconsin's maximum security prisons. But while locked up in jail for more than a year and a half awaiting trial as a serial rapist, a curious thing happened. There was another reported rape behind this house in Turner's old neighborhood that seemed remarkably similar to the ones Turner was charged with, and no one had been arrested. Two months later, Turner wrote from his jail cell to the Wisconsin State Crime Lab. I wrote a letter to the state lab, the lady that did the uh, DNA uh, test on my cases, and I told her, I said that I heard that through the grapevine someone had raped this woman on the streets. Now, I'm asking you to do a DNA test. Turner insisted the real serial rapist was still on the loose. Run the DNA evidence from his case against the DNA evidence from this new case, he asked, and see what you get. The letter made its way to Assistant District Attorney Norman Gunn, the man who was prosecuting Turner as a sexual predator. And as soon as I read that, I said, now how does he know about this sexual assault? I just, there's just no way. So, I mean, red flags were going up. But I had no idea at that time what was coming. Gunn is a true believer in DNA science, so he was skeptical of Turner's letter. In order for Turner to be innocent, there would have to be someone else out there with the same DNA. That's impossible, Gon knew, unless Turner had an identical twin, which he does not. Still, Gon was intrigued enough to order that the evidence be examined. What did it show? It showed that the DNA matched Anthony Turner perfectly. But wait a minute, Anthony Turner is in jail. Correct. Somehow, a science that was considered dead solid perfect was showing that DNA from a man who'd been locked up for nearly two years was now turning up in a rape that occurred while he was still behind bars. This is the profile of... DNA the analyst Sharon Tag helped do the comparison. This is the DNA from the bodily fluid taken from the rape victim? Yes. This is Anthony Turner's DNA? Yes. That looks like a match to me. Yes, this represents three areas of DNA, and um, this testing looks, actually looks at 13 in all. And in all three of these areas, um, this sample matches Mr. Turner. But now you understand that the man who told you about this, he's in prison. Yes. How do you explain that? Uh, well, obviously his explanation was that there's someone else out there in the city of Milwaukee. With my DNA. With, his, with the same DNA as him, and it's a coincidence. But in the world of DNA science, there has never been such a coincidence. In fact, DNA testing is so accurate that there is only a one in two quintillion chance that someone else's results would look the same as Turner's. Gon had built his career on the supposition that this science never, ever lies. Not only does this person have the same genetic profile, which is impossible, but he had to have been in Milwaukee, Wisconsin on all four dates, basically following Anthony Turner around and then raping these women. So I knew something was wrong here.
a straight second degree sexual assault. To find out what, right. Gunn dispatched Milwaukee okay. police detectives Greg Jackson and Laurie Gallion to have a little chat with the latest rape victim. They finally tracked her down 100 miles away, and the trip was worth it. We knew that she was a key to all this, and we had to find her to clear up any doubt about the DNA process and testing. Well, especially with the letter naming her. How would he know her name if it was a stranger sexual assault? After only a few minutes with her, they no longer thought they'd heard it all. What are the first words out of her mouth? That she knew that someday that the truth would come out. The whole thing was a scam that began in a late night chat between Anthony Turner and his cellmate. The idea was my uh, cellmate was laying up one night in the county jail, locked up. You know, it was, it was overcrowded, so they double you up. You know, he's on the floor, and I'm on the bunk, of course. And uh, he said, Turner. I said, what's going on? He said, I got a way where we can get some money, you can sue. You can become a free man. I said, let me hear it. He said, take your semen, give it to me, or find a way, or we can get it out, and I can give it to my wife and have her to uh, scream rape. Anything seems likely. Right. So I thought about it. The more I thought about it, the more I put it together. And putting it together meant getting his DNA out beyond the jail walls. Mr. Turner, basically what he did, he used a ketchup condiment. He sealed the outer edges with tape, made it small enough and flat enough that it was able to go into an envelope and be mailed out of the uh, criminal justice facility or county jail. He sent the package to his mother, Margaret Turner, who then left it for someone his family recruited from the neighborhood to act as the rape victim, Samantha Walker. You said all you got to do is just put the semen on your inner thighs and on your panties. That's it. And I guess when the police come or whatever, when they check the DNA, he said it'll come back to him and they'll figure out, you know, how can he be in two places at one time or something to that effect. Did they offer you anything to do this? Um, $50. To get the money she revealed to the detectives, she had to do exactly as she was told. Report that she was raped within the immediate area where he had committed the crimes and he made it he was very specific with her that she had to go to the woman's assessment center that's where we collect evidence where a sexual assault kit can be taken from her a nurse recovered the dna evidence from her body and clothing walker even looked through the standard mugshot book but told investigators she could not spot her attacker after that she had to disappear which she did mission accomplished look like a rape Mm -hmm. Tested like a rape. Mm -hmm. Correct. You came very close. <laughs> but no cigar, huh? Anthony Turner, it's now clear, was simply one of the first and most creative to pick up on what's becoming an article of faith among America's criminals. If DNA is good enough to put you behind bars, then you better figure out a way to outsmart DNA. And they start at the crime scene itself. It's getting out, basically, to these guys that they know that when you leave that semen behind, you basically left a trail right to yourself. Might as well throw your wallet down. Correct. We can get DNA from the sweatbands of the baseball caps. So I think they're a little more protective as far as making sure that they're not leaving anything behind. They used to leave the gloves behind, rubber gloves or latex gloves. But now those gloves can be turned inside out and examined for DNA. So they're not leaving the gloves behind anymore. And that's not all. Turner may have been the most bizarre example, but other criminal suspects are becoming just as savvy. Some have forced their victims to bathe in order to wash away DNA samples. And recently, guards in one jail even overheard inmates plotting how to deliberately scatter DNA-rich items such as foreign hair and blood at crime scenes just to throw detectives off. Would it surprise you to learn that, in fact, Inmates appear to be schooling each other. This is a common topic on the uh, exercise yard rounds. Wouldn't surprise me at all. They teach each other how to be a thief. They can certainly teach each other how to be a courtroom scientist, maybe. Certainly. DNA is very unique, and it's, it's like a second fingerprint. I believe in that, you know what I'm saying, to a certain degree. But if it's done right, there's no doubt that DNA is affects it's very it's very good it's there's no doubt you sound like you've been studying dna quite a bit yeah to a certain degree 
And although Turner admits to smuggling his DNA out of jail, he insists he was just trying to test the science. I wasn't really trying to fool anyone. I was trying to find out the truth. Oh, now, come on. You, 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 you were trying to pull a slick one on them, and it, you almost succeeded. No, no, what see, you fail to realize is that I'm saying that if we take this test, and, and this DNA test show that I'm not the guy, then would that be a slick one to find out the truth? The truth, according to the science, is that he did it, all of it. No one has been slick enough yet to fool this science, leaving criminals to keep trying and prosecutors wondering just how far inmates like Anthony Turner will go to taint the evidence. We as prosecutors, we've dealt with that all our lives in any type of evidence. Confuse the issue, muddy the water, and hope that you can uh, uh, weave some reasonable doubt. That's nothing new. Do you think the longer we continue to use DNA to put people like Anthony Turner in jail, the smarter the defendants are going to become? Oh, I think they're going to get smarter. We just have to um, stay a step ahead of them. Anthony Turner was sentenced to 120 years in prison. His mother was given house arrest for her part in the scam. The supposed rape victim, Samantha Walker, was granted immunity. And recently, all convicted felons in the state of Wisconsin were ordered to give samples for the state's growing DNA databank. bank.